Good soil preparation will get your tomatoes off to the best start for the biggest tomatoes, best flavor, and highest production. Hi everyone, I'm Allie and I live in the high desert in zone 8. We have summer months, usually three months out of the season, that reach 100 degrees. And we'll have a couple of weeks out of that time that can get up to be 110. So tomatoes don't like that and I'm going to show you what I do to prepare my soil so that I have the highest production through the summer months. As chilly as it is right now, it's hard to imagine that I'll be planting tomatoes in just a couple of weeks when our temperatures warm up. I like to prepare my beds a couple of weeks before planting tomatoes and add my soil amendments. That way the soil organisms in that soil can break all these nutrients down and make them available for the tomato plants when I plant them. It's really important to rotate crops, especially in the nightshade family, like your tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplant. This will really help prevent soil-borne diseases. This bed here hasn't had tomatoes planted in it for three years, so I'm going to get this bed prepared for tomatoes this year. One of the things that I add to my tomato beds every year is calcium. It really helps enhance good pollen germination and it really creates a healthy cell structure in those tomatoes. Plus, it helps with the tomatoes so they don't crack as easy. And one of the big things is, is it prevents blossom end rot, which is really a problem in hot climates or wet climates. There are lots of natural sources for organic calcium. One of them is dolomite lime. Now this one can raise your pH a bit, so you don't want to be using this if you've already got alkali soil. This is more suited for acidic type soils. Another really good source is garden gypsum. Now this one's really great for alkali soils like us here. Not only that, but it helps break up the clay soils and creates better drain. Oyster shale also is a good source of calcium, and this is the one that I like to use every year. It feeds the soil microbes in the soil, which stimulates more root growth, which we want here. And it also creates a really good soil tilth. Now on all of these, you're going to want to read the packages to see how much to apply because they range from two pounds per hundred square foot to six pounds per hundred square foot. When I apply my calcium to my soil, I do it as a general broadcast over the whole surface and work it in. Rather than the old school where you'd put a tablespoon in the planting hole where you put your tomato plant because the plant roots grow outwards. They don't stay right there, so they're gonna reach out for their nutrition. So by general broadcasting, it's always available to them. Green sand is another soil amendment that I'll be adding to my tomato bed, and I actually add this to all of my vegetable beds because it provides a nice amount of organic potassium as well as lots of minerals. Now, potassium is responsible for the overall health of the plant. Plus, it really helps with the stresses of the hot and cold temperatures, which is really good for our hot climate here in southern Utah. And it also maximizes the production of flowers. And if we don't have those flowers, we don't have those tomatoes. And I've found when I don't use this, I don't have the high production that I should get with my tomatoes. So I really think that you can't grow in a hot climate without potassium. Green sand also increases the sugar content in your fruit. So that just means that it's going to be a better flavored tomato. Nitrogen. Now there's a misconception that you shouldn't be using nitrogen with your tomato plants. Nitrogen is responsible for leafy green. And if we think about it, we want our plants to take off and grow pretty good in the beginning. But if we have too much nitrogen during the growing season, then we're going to end up with nothing but leafy green and no flowers. But providing nitrogen early on in the season will get that plant off to a good start. But we definitely want a low nitrogen fertilizer. One of my favorite sources for nitrogen fertilizer is fish bone meal. It contains 3%, which I found to be just right. It's a slower release than something like a blood milk, which we would never want to use because that's 12% and that's way too much nitrogen fertilizer. We really never want to go anything more than a 4% nitrogen. Now that's just those numbers that you'll see on the box, the NPK. Fish bone meal provides an ample amount of phosphorus, which we're going to need for our tomatoes. This helps with the bud development as well as the root system, creating a nice, deep, healthy root system. So between our fish bone meal, where we have the 316, so we have our nitrogen and phosphorus, and then our green sand, which is a 3%, will give us our potassium. So then we have a 316-3, which provides us just the perfect balanced fertilizer for tomato plants. 
This bed is completely full with vegetables, but a lot of these vegetables were fall planted or even last spring planted like kale here. And now it's starting to go to seed, so I don't really mind pulling this out. I've got some leeks here that I'll pull out and I'll just put those in the farm store. The only thing I'm really sad about here is I've got some cilantro in here, but I'll just take this and put it inside and we can use it for juicing. I've got a lot of chickweed in here and other little veggies that can just go right to the chickens. If I had time, I would just chop and drop this or work it into the soil, but I've only got two weeks before it's tomato season. So I'm gonna pull all this out, clean this bed up, feed it to the chickens, put stuff in the farm store, and put things in our refrigerator. I have a couple of top chop collard greens right here that I planted late fall, and I really don't wanna part with them yet, so I'm actually gonna just dig these up with a big root system and put them in some felt pots. That way I can kind of take advantage of them and it's cool enough that I can get away with this. There's some dill and chickweed that's just kind of all mixed in here. And so this chickweed is really good for my chickens, but we also have some baby chicks right now. And if I chop this up and mix it in with their food, it gives them a lot of minerals and really makes for a healthier chick. Even though these baby leeks are small, they're great used in dishes. Look at how pretty that leek is. Got all that pretty white. When I was pulling the leeks out, they came out really easy, which is a good sign of good loose soil. I've almost got this bed all the way cleared out. Now I could have left some of this stuff and just done some inner planting with my tomatoes, but I'm gonna put the tomatoes on the north end of this bed and put a bunch of carrot rows on this south end because they'll get more light here. So I need everything pulled out of here and it's smoothed out nicely so I can plant those carrot seeds easily. Now at this point, I wanna make sure that my soil is nice and loose because tomatoes like really loose soil. And so I can stick my, my spade in here and if it goes in really nice, then I'm probably not gonna till because I don't need to. I don't wanna disturb those microbes in the soil if I don't have to. But if it's really tight and that fork doesn't go in there very good, then you're gonna probably wanna turn that soil so that those roots of those tomatoes can penetrate deeply. Carrots and tomatoes really make good companions because they really like the same nutrient level and the same soil. Nice and loose and deep amending. Now that I've got the beds all cleaned out, it's time to add my calcium and my fertilizer to this bed. Now, if you don't know what your pH level is, I actually recommend that you get it tested before you add your lime or your gypsum or your oyster shell. Because especially if you have a high pH and you add lime to it, you're gonna raise that pH even more. And then that makes it really hard for that calcium to be absorbed by those plants. I'll be adding oyster shell to my bed and it calls for two and a half pounds per hundred square foot. And the area that I'm amending is only 50 square foot. So I'm just gonna add approximately a pound to this area. And I'll just sprinkle that right over the top. I'll put my green sand over the top. I'll be using about a pound of that as well. And then I'm gonna be using the fish bone meal so that supplies my nitrogen and my phosphorus. And I'll be using about two pounds of this. And I'll just put this over the surface, lightly work it in with a fork and then over the top of that, I'm gonna add my compost. And I like to do two to four inches of compost. I'll use a little bit of my compost as well as some mushroom compost because I really like the combination of these two and the tomatoes seem to do really well with these. Now that I've got everything added and I've got this smoothed out, I wanna put in my tomato cages or my trellising system, which is what I'm gonna be doing. And I use cattle panels for this. And what I do is I put in some T-posts and then I elevate those cattle panels about a foot off of the soil level and then just tie those up. And that makes a really great support to put tomatoes on. And I'll put that on my north side and then in about a week or so, I'll be putting in my carrot seeds. But I've gotta wait for the tomatoes until we are past our frost date. So I've got a couple of weeks still, but this will give this time all of the soil to just kind of mash and mellow and be just right when it's time for planting. It may seem like a lot of work, but to me it seems like more work growing vines and no tomatoes all season long than just a few hours of work. Keep an eye out for our tomato planting episode coming to a theater near you soon. Luna, do you think that the tomato video on the big screen is ever gonna start? What are you doing now? Luna and I are waiting for the tomato video on the big screen to start. It hasn't even been filmed yet. Oh.